Good morning, SEC Church. Hope you've been having a great week. Well, this week for our midweek message, I'm going back to one of my old favorites, that is the Apostle John. We've been going through the one of the epistles of John in our youth Bible study, and this has inspired my midweek message this week. And so it's entitled, Do We Have the Same Simple Desire as John? In John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 31, it reads, But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now this is the purpose verse of the fourth Gospel, the Gospel of John. Now John wrote five of the New Testament books. He wrote his own Gospel, the fourth Gospel. He wrote three epistles, one John, two John, and three John, which is consequently the shortest book of the New Testament, 14 verses, and he also wrote the book of Revelation. Now all of these inspired words of God were written while he was in exile on this island of Patmos. Now Patmos is a very small little island, it's 16 kilometers across and and about 10 kilometers wide and it's in the, the Argonne Sea, it could, could still be found on Google Maps, I was googling it earlier. And the Romans used this place for political exile. And so what what possibly could have happened, according to the historians, was John was saying that Jesus is Lord, God is God, and the the the, the Caesar was saying, Well I'm God, and political exile was where John was heading. And John's mention on the on the island in Revelation one nine probably means that he was a prisoner um on on Patmos and uh guys like Eusebius was also uh, who uh, was also historians who said that, that John was there. And so John was Jesus' beloved disciple. And he was also one of the disciples that were called first on the Sea of Galilee. Now this this is a, it may not be a folly, but it, it could be considered that John was the best friend of Jesus. And now John, sitting decades after he had watched his best friend, die, resurrect and ascend, and after he'd watched the, 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 the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and after he'd watched the growth of the early church, and after he'd watched all the other ministries of the other apostles, and watched even Paul grow his ministry and proclaim the gospel, who, who passed away in around 65 AD, John sits in around 95 AD in his relatively old age and pens his memories and thoughts and conclusions around his best friend, these Holy Spirit-inspired words of who his best friend was to him and who he wants the, the other people to know about his best friend. And so John's motive in all of this is clear. He wants people to know the Jesus that he knew and the Jesus that we know in our lives, and he wants the world to know who Jesus is. And so in his gospel account, this is why his gospel is so radically different to the other four gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are considered to be synoptic gospels in the way that they can fit together. You can track their stories quite quite simply. In John's gospel, when you read it, it is starkly different. It still gives the gospel account, but it is starkly different because John is writing a few decades after Jesus' life and death and resurrection, and he is contemplating over all that has been happening, and he wants us to know, as he says, he wants us to know this Jesus, who is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, we may have life in his name. And he also writes in his epistle, his first epistle, that he, in in chapter 2, he says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. And I can just picture these words coming out of a fatherly figure of the community. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And so, do we know this Jesus, the, the Messiah, the Son of God, the one that brings life, the one who is our righteous advocate before the Father, the one who has atoned for our sins? John knew him, and he wants us to know him. This is his simple desire, that he wants us to know him. And he wants us to share that with other people. 
And so do we have the same simple desire as John? Do we know this Jesus and do we desire to proclaim him to those around us? Simply and clearly. When we read through John's account of who Jesus is, there's no mystery to who Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father except through him. And so let's listen to John and let's join him in the mission of proclaiming who Jesus is to this world.